This is Jackie, and I'm here with Matthew Kublai-Khan. We're at the last stop of the, of the Maryland Warp Tour. How has, um, how has tour been so far for you guys? It's been really good, especially because we're a small band, and with our style of music, too, we're kind of like a very niche uh, genre, I guess. So getting an opportunity like this is pretty good for a band like us, like I said, and, and it's been going good. <laughs> What is the hardest part of Warp Tour? And how long it is. Haven't had a day off in a while. No. We have one coming up in about two days, but that'll, that'll end the 20-day stretch we just did, which sometimes it's kind of better to not have any off days because it's good to just keep the momentum going. But we're all getting to the point now where we'd love to just rest for a day. So. <laughs> rest for a day and then one more week and that's it. Um, what, is, what is your favorite Warp Tour memory, either as a band playing or as an attendee? Oh. Uh, I mean, it's kind of a pretty much just the whole thing, just being able to do it. I feel like the memories right now, we're still making them, so I haven't really thought like had it you know milled over in my mind too much. But I think once I get home, or even later on in my life, is when I'm going to be like, that's the moments. You know what I mean? So. Uh, last year, the band released Nomad. Are there plans to follow that up? Are you currently writing or working on things? Yeah, we're trying to. It's just a slow process. We all live in separate states. So trying to get together to do everything. I mean, we all got, like, you know, wives and kids and junk. So it takes a little bit of time. But we're working on it. So what does that look like, then, if you're, if you're, from, if you're currently living in other states? Do you make a, a point to come together, or do you work on things separately? A little bit of both. You know, with, with the, the Internet and everything now, anything's possible. We do a lot of stuff through just email and sending stuff like that. But we also, we're a very organic band to begin with, so it's we're, we do best when we're in the same room together. So we've already had a couple trips where we all kind of migrate down to a central area and spend a couple of days together and write a little bit. It's just going to take time, you know what I mean, having to balance out this plus tours and all the other stuff. So. And how is Nomad kind of an evolution since your Youth War EP? Uh, I mean, it's really, it's kind of just the same music we've been putting out, just better, you know, if that makes sense. <laughs> like, we never had the goal of reinventing the wheel and we certainly haven't done that even if we wanted to but we just keep we've really found our niche as far as our sound and I feel like we're pretty good at writing stuff that would appeal to the people that like us but also appeal to people that have never heard of us that may be fans of just heavy music in general so and a lot of your lyrics deal with um you know strong social issues where do you sort of pull those influences from uh pretty much I mean I write all the lyrics and everything is it all pertains to my life whether it be things that I see you whether it be experiences that I've had you know growing up and stuff like that but I just the way I see it is we're given a really good platform as far as being on a stage when I try and say something worth saying because I remember when I started going to shows those are the bands that really did it for me or the bands that that really you know had something to say because I when I was a kid I didn't want to listen to my parents or teachers or cops or anybody so it's like going to those shows really gave me a reason to be like oh well you know these are somebody I can kind of mold myself around and if it's positive stuff, it's positive stuff, no matter what the medium may be, you know. And that's a lot of what our website is. We merge music with the social causes and charity span support. Are there some issues that come to mind that you would like to address maybe when you start writing again? Uh, problem is, and I've told the guys this right now, is that for the first time in a very long time, my life is going pretty well. So as far <laughs> as like personal, you know, uh, dilemmas or traumas I may be going through, it's Things are honestly going pretty good, but at the same time, I mean, that can be just as important to people as addressing, you know, negative social issues is, you know, counting your blessings and then addressing things that you are thankful for and things that are good because it's it's very easy to be negative, but to try and be positive is a little bit more difficult and you have to be a little bit more, you know, tactful when it comes to, uh, I guess, expressing that through the kind of medium that we do as far as heavy, you know, negative music, so... Yeah, I think I think that there's ways to, to spin even positivity in a way that can be relatable in heavy music, you know. That's a good point. I, I appreciate that. Um, so, so I feel like in 2018, social media can be kind of a necessary evil for folks in bands. And for those who read it, it can kind of be like a wormhole. You go down and you don't really always want to return. What role does social media have uh, with your band? Is it something that you kind of you use sparingly or something that you sort of make sure that you are utilizing? I mean, to be honest with you, it's kind of like I said earlier, we are an extremely organic band. We're very face-to-face. -face. And uh, we have, 
like I don't even all I have is Instagram. I don't have a Facebook. I deleted all that stuff a long time ago because it is it's a very toxic environment that breeds a lot of negativity that you you don't have to deal with. People think the internet's so important and it really only exists if you let it, you know, if you're looking at it all the time. Otherwise, just live your life, you know. But uh we do have people because it is it is a very important tool to be used as far as any job nowadays. So we do utilize it to uh you know, reach out to people, let people know what's going on with us and stuff like that. But I don't think we've ever been on like the internet hype train as far as like our band blew up through the internet because that's a that's a very big thing that happens nowadays too. We've we just use it for to let people know when to come see us in person kind of thing. You know what I mean? Just a- advertise, you know, set times and things like that. Exactly. What role does Spotify have in a band of your genre? Oh, Spotify has completely changed the whole game. I mean, even physical copies of CDs, I think, are going to be irrelevant, you know, soon, if, if not already. You know, they, they, they uh, last record we put out, they, they judged it on streams, not so much physical copies being moved because, you know, that's just a collector's item now, you know what I mean? Spotify is incredible, though, because it, it's a good way for bands also to really get a good gauge on listeners. Like, we're able to see exactly how many people have listened to a particular song. And, I mean, you can always multiply that by, you know, people who do have physical copies or people that listen to it through YouTube or music videos or anything like that. And uh, I just love it as, as a listener and lover of music because I can find anything I really want to find. And it's reasonable and it's not, you know, it's very user-friendly and stuff like that. So I'm... I'm big for Spotify. Do I, you know, necessarily know what it's going to do to live music or, you know, the physical aspect of music? I, I don't know, but I guess time will tell, you know. I think a lot of bands are waiting for some way to see the correlation between music streams and then ticket sales because it's like the li- it's the live shows that really matter. I mean, at the, at the end of the day, I feel like the pinnacle of a band, especially an underground band, is live show. If, if you have a good live show and you're able to sustain a good crowd through a live performance, that's important because any Joe Smo nowadays, it seems like, you know, every week there's something new for you to purchase or buy or listen to. It's, it's a constant, you know, competition nowadays as far as what can we do to be edgy to get more people to buy our product, you know. But when it comes to live shows, I feel like at least if you're going to be edgy or you're trying to put a product out, it's, it is what it is, you know what I mean? So I hope that answered the question. I'm not sure. And live shows, I think, are, are a true test of where your fans are. Oh, exactly. So you're here at Warped Tour. What's up next for you after that? Basically, to cap out the year, we got, uh, we're got we going to Europe about a month after Warped Tour. We got just a few just shows in the South Texas area. And then we're doing another uh, month-long tour in the U.S. in the fall. And then a couple more shows around Christmas time, hopefully like some charity stuff. But... Other than that, I mean, it's pretty much set in stone, which I'm excited about because I don't want to be too stagnant. But at the same time, after doing a tour this strenuous, I don't necessarily want to burn a candle at both ends. I hear that. Well, stay tuned for much more from Kublai Khan. This is Jackie. Thanks to Chorus FM and In the Key of Change.